Hi, Jürgen. Um, Hi. I know you've earned the right to do whatever you want in terms of uh, fielding uh, a side tomorrow. You, you, you may rotate, uh, leave players out. I, I think you've earned that right with five wins from five. So what what is your feeling around um, rotating a side ahead of you know another big Premier League game at the weekend against Villa? Yeah, we have to rotate, we will rotate. Um, that's clear. We have to, it's the main, it's the main, it's the headline, actually. Uh, medical department would smash me if I would play the same side again. Um, and so we will make changes, but um, it's always like this. If you make changes, you get in fresh legs. If you get in fresh legs, you can have a higher energy level in the game. If you have a higher energy level, you have a chance to, to play a good game. And that's exactly what we, the idea behind it. Um, yeah, that's it pretty much. How does that go down with the likes of Mo Salah? Obviously, I'm not sure whether he's going to play tomorrow, but it, he'll be itching to play. He scored in each of Liverpool's last six away games in, in Europe. He, he breaks records galore. He's, he's heading towards Steven Gerrard's European target. So I'm, I'm assuming he's, he's desperate to, to uh, give you a nudge and play, isn't he? So it will not give you now the lineup, but I cannot change all. So that's yeah. not true. So we need um, need to have uh, players on the pitch. So I cannot start with rotate and then start with nine or whatever. That's not possible. So um, yeah, we will see if more plays or not, and if he plays, if he can score or not or whatever. But the players are very understanding about the situation. Not only the players who don't play, the players who have to play as well. So um, that's how it is. We we want to field the, the the best possible side for the situation we are in. And um, we have we played fifth, five games in the last 14 days, 15 days, which is, yeah, a lot. And, um, and now we have to play after the Milan game again, pretty much the same number of games in a similar amount of time. So uh, we, have to, we have to make the right decisions and we will. And just on his on his contract, I know there's quotes out today saying that it, it's in the hands of the management. He wants to stay. He says there's no problem, but we have to reach an agreement for the contract, and it's up to them. So, who's them? You and everyone else who negotiates with him. Oh, you know exactly what what, what is about, and we, we we are talking and um, whatever. Extending a contract with a player of uh, like Mo is is not a thing you do. And um, you meet for a cup of tea in the afternoon and and find agreement. That's completely normal. Um, we have. There's really nothing else to say about Mo speaks about it when he gets asked about it. I can only say a few things because all the rest is not for the public, obviously. Um, but um, I'm not sure if he gave the interview in, in English or if it got translated from English, uh, from um, Arabic into English. And that is a massive issue how we saw in the last few days again. Um, so that you, that really a lot of things can happen when, when somebody tries to do that. Um, and that's Mo is fine. I'm fine. Um, I think what we want, what we all want, is clear. And things like this need time. That's it. It's pretty likely. <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering. Um, everyone calls him. You know, everyone can see what he does when he comes onto the pitch and the impact that he has. And you saw that against Wolves. In your time here, has he ever moaned at not getting more chances? Oh, it's not the right word, but of course he knocked on my door and we were talking about things. We worked together as long as I'm here, pretty much. Uh, so that happened from time to time, but it's not about talking about things, it's about um, uh, letting things happen. And that for the players always the same. Um, and uh, it's not that they was now always in all situations in the best possible, in a world-class shape, and I just didn't bring him, so uh, he had got injuries in, in, in wrong moments. I, I still remember it, and that's one of my, that's one of the, uh, was a really, really decisive moment in the Everton game, and it was flying that time. He played an away game at, at Dortmund. Dortmund was asking, well, what's that? What kind of strike is that? They lost only Lewandowski a few months before, I think, or, or, uh, or a year before. And they were like, oh my God, that's pretty much the same level and these kind of things. And then um, and they've got really badly injured. We have had to rush him back for the European League final. These kind of things are influential for, for careers. And 
then step by step we improved and um, with with better specific lineup and it was um, very often with more Bobby and Sadio and and Div was in behind that and played the role there played more played less all these kind of things that's how life is but that says not we how is said after the game if you are not a starter for Liverpool you can still be a world class player it's really possible um, I know people see that from time to time slightly different but it's possible and in specific moments Div is absolutely outstanding and everybody was overly happy when he scored the goal not only because he scored the goal but because he scored the goal and. It's a nice story, you know. Let's carry on from here. I just have one more. Um, in terms of continues without giving too much away, are there any players that we could see making a return from injury, perhaps, that have been out rejoining the first team squad? We have to see. Again, I'm in the hands of the medical department pretty much because we cannot. Um, I have really to to accept all the decisions that we always do, but I have to as well in this situation as well. So we have players who are obviously played a lot of games and um, um, can I play, can we take them or whatever, can we bring them on, all this kind of people. The good thing about the Champions League is we have at least they have the chance to change five times. Um, and that's something really helpful and that's what we will use. But um, uh, probably it's it's possible that players from injury have a few minutes, but a few minutes you can, it's difficult to start if it's not you're not able to play 45. So. But changing in the first half is not my it's not my thing I like to do too much. So um yeah, hopefully. Hang on one second. Hi Jürgen, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well. Um just another one really on Divokarigi. Di I mean, did he prove at the weekend that you don't only have in great individuals? At Liverpool, but you have a great team and a great squad. And is it great squads that actually go on and win things? Yeah, the last thing is definitely true. You can only win things with a fantastic squad. Um, did you ask if he proved it at the weekend? No, no I, I said he proved at the weekend that you have not only a great oh, starting yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. But hopefully for you, not the first time. So, um, yeah. So we are. We are, we are happy with the squad. We have we know each other for, for a long time. Most of us, um, we we work to, we love to work together. Um, we know our roles, all these kind of things. We can with some. I think our football looks much more mature um, than in the past. So because we just play longer together, and yes, the boys have a very good relationship, uh, a relationship between each other. So um, yeah, we have a good squad and. Um, I'm not sure if that if we proved that at the weekend, but um, uh, we, I think or rather we proved that really a lot of times. And the weekend was just one more time, maybe. And is it finally that is it the hardest part of your job to keep people like Divock Origi happy? You aren't playing every week, and maybe you do come and knock on the door. Is, is that almost one of the most difficult things to, to be able to keep players who you know you are going to need at some point happy? I'm not sure if it's just the most difficult thing in the job, but it's 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 one thing to do in the job. It's it's like that. Players have to feel um, needed. Players have to feel um, that we uh, value their quality, uh, that we need them. All these kind of things, and um, that yeah, it's it's part of the job. And um, but first and foremost, the job of the player is that's in all teams the same. They have to train. That I have to make really difficult decisions. That's that's how it is. And then we all have to accept that they only can start eleven and three can come on. So um, in the long term, everybody can be happy. In the short term, sometimes not. But in the long term, I think really our players are all fine. Um, but uh, that doesn't help in the moment sometimes. Not wanting to make it all, all about Divock, but he, he's he scored some, uh, as we all know, he's scored some important goals in some important games, and he he hasn't played a lot. So what does that say about him? You know, from a mentality point of view, that he can come on and have that effect, having not had the rhythm and and had the advantage that the players have had. To play it's, on. it's one it's one special thing in his skill set. It's not the only thing. It's not that he can only come on and play well. So how is that? And he had brilliant games for us from the start. Uh, and um, and one of the one of the most 
the, one of the biggest games now in history against Barcelona I started, for example, and played an incredible game and scored the goals in the right moments and stuff like this. So, um, yeah, it's just it's part of his skill set. That's it. But he's, um, he's a very positive person, that's for sure. And he is, um, yeah, incredibly talented. That's just how it is. He can shoot with right and left. He's, um, he's, his technical level is incredible. He's really, really, really quick. He's in the air, how we all know, a monster as well. So um, it's really, it's really interesting, really interesting package. But that doesn't mean that you are a constant starter for Liverpool FC because the quality we have, that's how it is. But that's how life is. There are worse things than being not a constant starter for, for Liverpool FC, I tell you. So it's really nice to be part of this squad. It's unbelievably nice to be part of this um, uh, team and all these kind of things. So it's, it's all good. But it's nice that he has that skill and uh, that he used it at the weekend. Is it be important for him to get minutes looking ahead to, to January when you're going to be without, without Mo and Sadio? He's going to have to play more of a, a regular role, so he needs to get the minutes in the back. Obviously, obviously he showed he does need a long warm up, so, um, <laughs> so uh, we will see what happens after that. Yeah, and the way in which someone like Tyler Morton has burst onto the scene this season and other young players as well, does that give you kind of more kind of faith and, and trust you can make changes, yet you know that this, the standards will remain high? And, and what enables players here to be able to step in when they haven't played much football and deliver at that kind of level? Is it the training environment in terms of the intensity they're used to? Yeah, that's all it. We play or we train. And we all know, we've said it plenty of times, I would love we could train more often because then we could play much more intense. That's how it is. But um, just in the, in, the, in the specific things, the exercises we do, it's all about doing the things, what we need to do in a football game with the right intensity and as often as somehow possible. And um, yeah, there are a lot, of, a lot of really good young players in this club at the moment. Uh, we really big pros, prospects, and I'm uh, really happy about that. Um, and Tal is one of them, so the only one, I think. Um, yeah, we will have more young boys tomorrow um, traveling with us and in the squad, um, so that's important. And let's see if they will play or not. But um, they are only with us because they have the quality to play the football we want them. To, we want to play. Final question, Michael. Uh, come on, who's on the? And then mind it cost us Timothy's coming in next. Michael, if you'd like to ask your question now's the time. Um I'm not sure you are on mute here and we can't see you, so if, if you don't appear in the next few seconds, I'm afraid we'll have to go. I think it cost us here just one more chance. Michael? Hello Michael. Si, sí, Mr. Mister, buongiorno. Eh, la mia domanda è questa. Eh, la, la passione per lei è, è tutto. La passione di un giocatore come Ibrahimovic o di uno stadio come San Siro, quanto può cambiare il Milan rispetto alla gara di andata? Translate to try. Sorry, Mike, could you ask in English? We're just struggling a little bit. Maybe now? Ah, yes. Okay. I understood Ibrahimovic. <laughs> Michael, sorry, the, the translation didn't work. I hear absolutely nothing. Yeah. No, is it? Devo ripetere. Ibrahimovic is a great player. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Apologies. The problems are end of the. Uh, we can't get a translation through on the. Uh, on that. No, dicevo. Se, se posso ripetere, eh, la, la passione per lei, mister, è una cosa importantissima. La passione di un giocatore come Ibrahimovic, che domani ci sarà, e di uno stadio come San Siro, quanto può cambiare il Milan rispetto alla partita di andata? Passion could be passion. Mohamed Salah, Ibrahimovic, San Siro. I'm looking forward to play in San Siro, I can tell you. 
first time for me. Um, it's not the first time that we play Slatan Ibrahimovic, but it's great to have players involved like Mo and him. But thank God they're not the only two who are on the pitch. Otherwise, San Siro would be too big. Um, so, hope to see you tomorrow and could answer your question then.